Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about doing artist copies and for this demonstration I'm going to do the scream. So the scream is actually oil, gouache and whatever that says casein and pastel on cardboard. So a real mix of mixed media on cardboard. But I thought some of this mark making, we've got some lovely expressive mark making here and all this intensity of colour, it would be quite nice to use the Derwent Ink Dense blocks for this because I haven't used them for a while. So you will be able to get that, those nice sharp lines as well as some of those bigger blocks of colour in there. So when you're doing an artist's copy, one of the first things really to think about is the size and dimensions of your painting that you're going to be doing because you want to keep those the same. Because one of the things that makes them a masterpiece or makes them so renowned is the composition. So if you alter the shape even slightly, making it narrower than it is, it's, the composition is going to alter quite a bit. So to begin with, I have actually got this printed off. I've got a, another copy of it here. And I did the dimensions exactly the same. So you could scale it up or you could scale it down. It doesn't matter what size you do as long as you keep the dimensions. But to make it easy for me today, I've done it exactly the same as this one I've got here. So like I say, it's in mixed media and we've got lots of nice colours in there. We've got lots of oranges, yellows and some blues and greens, all sorts in there when you really look. And this is the thing about doing an artist's copy, it makes you look. So we're really looking for why, um, and it might not be this painting, it could be any painting that you choose to do. Think about what makes it so special and why it's become such a renowned masterpiece. So if we look at the composition on this one, We've got um, the skies coming just nearly a third down. We've got this sort of line of the top of this shape here. Presumably some kind of a little lake inlet here um, and the hills behind. And that's about a third of the way down. And again, the face itself is about a third of the way, third of the way up and more or less a third in where we get that figure. So he's positioned in a good place. We've also got a lot of movement going on. We've got this line zooming off to here, but then of course it brings it back with these lovely curls around here. So there's all sorts going on in here that makes it a nice composition, taking the eye around the painting. So apart from that, we've got lots and lots of movement and lots of energy in there with these really expressive, quick lines. You can see them much more closely when you look, uh, you perhaps not pick them up on the camera, but there's a lot, a lot going on in here. And of course, the figure itself is really animated in a way. So think about what it is that made that a masterpiece, and it's very different for everything we look at. Um, so look at the colour palette, Look, and this is a good idea before you begin, perhaps um, is to, on a rough piece of paper or down the side of your margin, is to test your colours and try and get something similar. You don't have to have them exact, it's just, you know, we're just having a play with it, but by working out how the artist made those marks and how they got that technique. It might improve your own technique or it might give you ideas that you can carry forward into more painting. So it'll make you go away from your own style and maybe you'll develop something that can go on to be, you know, you can put into your own style later on. You might not make marks like this and you might find um, a tool or a media that you like for doing this kind of thing and then you might go on to use that in the future. So that's a good thing about doing an artist's copy. So I'll stop going on now and get on with this. So I'll just pop the book out of the way. So to begin with, like I said, I'd actually measured it exactly. So what I'm going to do now is get a few of those lines in with my ruler. I don't usually use my ruler, but when I'm using something like this and I want it to be exact, I can use the ruler. So that line sets off two centimetres up. So I'm just going to put a mark there. This is the line of the top railing here and it goes to six centimetres down there. And then we can join that up and this is going to help get the composition right. You don't have to do every line and then if we come across to where the bottom line of the rail is, that's six centimetres in. So if you think about that, that's the same measurement in here as it is there. So that's perhaps something that we've, is deliberate for the composition. So also by doing this, you're really thinking about what the artist was thinking about. 
and you can't really see where it goes to because of, obviously we've got these two figures so just go off into the distance there so that's basically the shape of the fence and then we've got the shape of the walkway here and then we need to know where he comes to so he's about just over two centimeters wide so he sets off about here and then his head top of his head eight and a half So the top of his head's up there somewhere. Okay, so that's going to give us some basic measurements to work to. That's just not looking right actually, so let's try that again. Yeah, eight and a half. Yep, just double checking. Maybe I've not got him far enough across because actually his head is further across than that mark we made there. So his top of his head's about here somewhere. So this is the other thing, it makes you really, really look and it's a good way to do it. It's like doing observational drawing. It's a very good discipline and practice to get into making your eye look and see more each time you look at the picture. Okay, so I'm going to get on with this now. Like I say, using the Derwent Ink Tense blocks. If you have any questions, if you want to put those in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll pop some music on while I carry on with this. I'm going to use a variety of techniques. I'll do some um, using the ink tense blocks straight from the block wet and some using them dry to get some of these marks maybe on the top afterwards. Okay so enjoy the rest of the video. I'll get on with it now. Thanks for watching and I shall see you again soon.